Hi, it's Lisa Bayer, and I am recording this solo session, this solo episode. And I'm going to um, put this both on my podcast, Social PR Secrets. So hi, everybody. And also Digital Detox Secrets, because I think it's very relevant to both. I want to just talk about some of my life lessons, transitions, and recent resets that I've made. And I'm hoping that by me sharing some of this information and some of these experiences with you, that I can also help you in some of your possible life lessons, transitions, and maybe you need a reset. So July marks a milestone month for me professionally and personally. It's the first time in 20 years I have no clients. I still have a business and I'm not shutting down my business, but I decided to do a complete reset of the buyer group and a complete reinvention of myself. So getting here took some intense self-awareness and clarity to what brings me the most joy and what really makes the most sense in my life. And it hasn't been an easy first six or seven months of 2021. Looking back, I realized I was suffering for the last few years. And when I brought this to the attention of a counselor that I was talking to at Canyon Ranch, she said, Lisa, you have been in survival mode, not for the past few years, but you've been in survival mode since you were a little girl. And yes, I think it it's true. And my own self-inflicted sabotage of putting myself last, always being in survival mode and doing things for the wrong reason that seemed to benefit everyone else but me is really what I've been doing way too much of. And being in survival mode is something that is very common for entrepreneurs because We've basically grown up that way, and that is a reason why we are so so successful, but we are also overachievers because we're afraid that something's going to go wrong and we're going to lose everything. And if we're not doing, doing, doing that, we're going to have some sort of a setback. So balance is really hard for entrepreneurs. I just am learning this and really hard for, for successful professionals, whether you're an entrepreneur or you know successful in any type of industry it doesn't matter. Overachievement can really be a burden and can really cause a lot of stress and burnout. So today's episode, I wanted to share some highlights and lowlights of the past year, the past year or so, and how I realized I needed serious help. And I realized that something drastic needed to happen or it would impact my physical health. And it was, I did need to to make some drastic changes, but I did not make them quickly or in a way that was ripping off a Band-Aid. I was as strategic as I could, and I was trying to be as self-aware as I could through the process so that I did not do some major damage that some quick decisions might have might have caused. So it all started actually in the beginning of the year, the beginning of 2021, I was invited by Elliot Rowe. He is part of my Baby Bathwater Mastermind, and he invited some of the Baby Bathwater members to participate in a seven-day Facebook challenge where we would be doing a 2021 mindset review. And I thought, well, you know, I really love this type of stuff. I've been doing self-help and professional development things since I was in my early 20s. So this was not really out of the ordinary. I didn't think that this was a sign that something was wrong. I just felt intrigued by what, what could the outcome, what would I find out? What could I learn about myself from doing this challenge? So what we ended up, we were challenged to do was we had to look at our year in review. So the year in review was 2020 and we had one column on the left side that what went well and we had to go through month by month of 2020 starting with January and listing two to three things for each month that went well. And then on the right hand side, what didn't go well in 2020 and month by month list two to three things that did not go well. And it was actually, you know, very therapeutic in a way to do it and very eye opening because you forget you forget like of some of the big highlights, whether they're positive or negative as they happen. And unless you go back and really write things down, or, you know, if you journal journaling and go going back and looking at your notes, you really do forget or looking at your camera roll also helps me remember. So some of the other questions that were posed is, okay, you know, here we have these positives and negatives of what went well and what didn't go well. What should what should I keep doing was a question. What should I stop doing? What is holding me back from being the very best version of myself? Some really good, good questions. So 
the very, very interesting thing that we had to do was describe my year, the positive things in one word, and then describe my year, the negatives in one word. So my positive one word was in 2020, I was extremely accomplished. I launched a podcast with 50 episodes to start with. I, we renovated our house. My daughter went off to school. We had an amazing vacation. We traveled a lot. One of my employees went on to be the CMO of one of my largest clients, which was exciting, but also stressful. But it was, I felt very accomplished. The negative in one word was destructive, which is very ironic. So my one positive word of 2020 was I was extremely accomplished. And at the same time, I was extremely destruct destructive in some ways. So I was like, okay, like, let me examine this and see what I can do with this insight of my own self. So a couple of things that I realized right away was I really was just carrying too much. And I was actually carrying, I felt like more than my clients cared and in some ways more than my team cared. And that could be extremely detrimental. I was investing in team members who realistically had their own agenda, which is fine. We're working in a new era. It's a gig economy. Everybody's got their own side gig, their own side hustle. Everyone has their own agenda. And that is not something that I should hold against anybody. But I was a little bit naive and just not realizing that this is the, rea the reality of today's generation. So in, in a lot of ways, because I wasn't living in this reality, I was taken by surprise when some people left unexpectedly or didn't follow through with things or weren't the person I thought they were or weren't as loyal as I thought that they should be. So again, this is my own me live, not living may, maybe in today's reality. Another thing I realized was being on the front lines with clients and the team, I was way too involved as an agency owner to be as involved as I was with, with the clients and with the team. And, you know, it's, it's hard when you're a business owner, you just want to, you want to be part of everything. And a lot of, a lot of the things I did with my clients and the communication with my team, I really loved. I love the strategic part of it. I love the creativity part of it. I love the analytics part of it. So it was hard for me to decide what to let go of. So that was one of the problems I identified. Another one was not enforcing boundaries. And this goes, you know, a lot of what I'm talking about is with clients, but also with family, with friends. And, you know, the words out of scope are really referring to clients. And it's really hard to be a freelancer or an agency in today's world because there's a lot of high expectations out there, a lot of unrealistic expectations. And, you know, if you're working with a team of, you know, maybe a combination of contractors, freelancers, and experts, if you're the agency owner or you're in charge of the project, you're ending up picking up the pieces when somebody doesn't show up or personal issues come up or changes are made. So this was definitely taking a toll on me. And, you know, maybe some of you listening can relate to this. Another thing I, you know, realized was that Contracts and commitments really mean nothing in today's world when it comes to a service agency. So whether it's as simple as being transparent about intentions and work ethics or honoring a signed agreement, it's really you know, unfortunate that the service agency model, in my opinion, is more broken than not. Because at the end of the day, if a client wants to cancel or just does not want to answer an email or wants to change a strategy or maybe wants to take a pause, you know, it's not the same as you know, maybe not paying your, your, your mortgage or something that's a critical bill where things are going to get shut down, you know, maybe not paying for your website hosting. I mean, not paying an agency, it's, it's a lot easier than not paying, let's say, some critical bill, which I believe an agency is critical. But working in the agency world is, the reality is it's more abusive than sometimes it is worth. One thing that you should know is on the positive side in 2020, I did implement a system called Profit First. And I did this during COVID, during lockdown, and I wanted to ensure that I maintained profitability. I wasn't sure what direction business was gonna be going. I wasn't sure what clients were gonna be canceling. I wasn't sure if any new business was gonna be coming in. I mean, if you look at the restaurant industry, they came to a complete standstill. I did not know what was gonna happen with the PR and digital marketing um, 
industry and how that was going to be impacted. So I wanted to make sure that I was staying profitable as possible and making making some cuts where I needed to, to cut costs. So for me, what ended up happening was 2021 was now on track to be my most profitable year in my career with more new business coming in that I could possibly dream of and amazing clients and amazing projects. So let me just back up for a minute. If I go back and I look where I was three to four years ago, I was ha- I was more of a consultant and an author speaker. And I was also teaching a class at University of Florida. And I was doing a lot of training for brands and training for, for different universities and also speaking and holding live workshops. But I decided I got a taste of entrepreneurship or a taste, a, a taste of what I forgot was entrepreneurship when I went to an entrepreneur mastermind, Baby Bathwater. And it was then that I realized I want to scale up my business and I wanted to scale up the buyer group. And the reason why I wanted to scale up was because I wanted to have a legacy business that my kids who at that time were in high school and college could take over. So hashtag dumbest reason ever to change your your business model because you're doing it for somebody else. At the time, I thought it was a great reason. And looking back, I, you know, have some, you know, insight as to, okay, that probably wasn't the best reason, but I did. So I I took that on. And why it wasn't something I was doing for me is so so why was it the dumbest reason ever to go and think, oh, I want to scale up my, my business and take advantage of my personal brand so that I can have a legacy business for my kids? Because it really wasn't doing, it wasn't, because it really wasn't something I was doing for me. So fast forward to today, and my kids actually don't care about the agency. They don't care about being part of the agency world. They don't really care that much right now about being an entrepreneur. And to be honest, I would not want them to be exposed to the potential client cruelty and self-inflicted abuse of trying to be, stay ahead and control expectations in a world where digital boundaries do not exist. Everything is 24 seven in the social media, PR and digital marketing world. So it's really tough. And I, I want to be honest about a couple of things that, that did happen this year because, you know, I went forward and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to scale, scale my agency. And it worked. I hired some senior talent. I hired a personal assistant. I hired account managers. I hired PR specialists. I hired agency specialists, all thinking that this would be a buffer for me to be managing my clients. And it would help me get, you know, more at a higher level of running the agency as a CEO versus being on the front lines. And it really just didn't work out that well for many reasons. The pandemic had, yes, something to do with it, but also other things that happened with some of my team members that were unexpected kind of pushed me to the front lines and I had no choice. What did this lead to? I did have a glimpse of suicidal thoughts. I never thought this would be me ever. I felt like I'm the most positive person in the world. And it's just something that, you know, I've been working and and on doing yoga and personal development and meditation for many years. I have my yoga certification and I really felt like I, I kind of had it mastered that I was more of the observer than feeling so pressured into thoughts of suicide. But for the first time I had a flash of a feeling of suicide. It was an instant coming as it was going, but it was a sign I needed to reevaluate my life. And in the grand scheme of things, it was not what you might be thinking. It's an example of, I cared way too much, much more than my clients did and in a not so healthy way. So when you're a business owner, you typically care way more than you should or need to. So what happened was the story of like, when I had this like glimpse of suicidal thoughts was one of my clients' websites was down. And when I noticed it, I thought, what if my team caused this? What if the reason why their website where they get thousands of visits a a day, if not more, how, how is it possible that we're causing this or is this even possible? Because the client had just warned me the day before that they were concerned about giving my team access because they did not want the site to go down and they wanted, warned us to be careful as fuck, to be completely, to be completely blatant and how they worded it. So When I saw the website down, I freaked out inside my head. I became overwhelmed. I became stressed with anxiety and fear of causing this. 
It turns out I reached out to the client and they were like, yeah, yeah, the server's down. It's out of my control. Can't worry about that. And I just thought, okay, well, why am I worrying about it if the client is being so relaxed about it? And I said, okay, you know, this is the first red flag. This was easy and too personal and attached for me to, okay, so this was my first red flag. This was way too personal and I was way too attached for me to care way more than the CMO. And that was when I was like, Lisa, you need to really step back. The point now of this is I was so burned out from the last 15 months or more that my mind and the point in all this is I was way too burned out from the last 15 months or so. My mind and my nerves were just spread too thin. Small things were being made huge things in my mind and I could not go on anymore. I was feeling, and I use the word feeling because that doesn't mean it was a fact. Feelings aren't always fact, facts, but I was feeling taken advantage of and I needed to find some relief and answers to turn my ship around. Other non-business things included, we sold our house during, the, during COVID after renovating it, then we bought another house and having to renovate that. And we did a lot of things in a six month period. My family also was in need of, of my attention. My daughter was a senior in high school when COVID hit and was suffering from depression and anxiety. And I was trying to keep her going in the right direction. And I just felt like I was on this hamster wheel of there was no getting off. I was going straight from trying to help my family, my daughter, our kids, my husband, you know, working with our renovation, the sale of our home, clients, team members. It was just never ending. I was waking up at five in the morning to help my daughter online until about 9 a.m. and then transitioning to start client calls back to back, some days for eight hours straight, only to have a glass or two of wine for relief and then starting the whole thing over the next day. It was getting pretty ugly. And nothing I felt like was helping, not yoga, not meditation, wine, or calls with my therapist. The clincher was this one weekend or this one, this the clincher was I drove for a client event to the West coast of Florida. And then the next day drove to the East coast of Florida to do a 2020 interview. And by then I was reaching the feeling of collapsing. I was really, really, really running on empty. So client demands and expectations were more and more intrusive and unrealistic. I felt like it was tunnel vision. Tunnel vision was a real problem with our clients and it was a constant education process. Part of the problem was me, I have to admit, because I have always been um, ahead with trends and with different applications of marketing, whether it be SEO with PR or social media with PR. Now it's virtual reality and augmented reality and, and marketing. And then being ahead has its disadvantages. It, and it's because there's a constant education process that you have to take with your team, your staff, and then also with your clients. So I was getting frustrated that I felt like everybody wanted to do the traditional PR or everybody wanted to stay in the safe box and nobody wanted to really do these innovative and modern strategies and tactics that I thought were going to be very beneficial when it came to ROI and results. So at this point, I decided, you know, I need to take myself off the front lines of all clients. And I literally just turned on my autoresponder one day. I said, I'm suffering from burnout. I'm out of the office until further notice. And in my mind, I was going to stay out of the office or my autoresponder was going to stay on until I figured out what I was going to do. So what I ended up doing was going to a place for 10 days that specialized in, I'm going to call this entrepreneur burnout. And the place was called Canyon Ranch. I highly recommend it. It was really, you know, a lifesaver for me. And it's a place where people go. They'll, they'll go maybe for a weekend reset once a year. They have a spa, but they also have physical specialists and mental specialists, life management specialists, stress management specialists, grief and loss specialists. 
So it was amazing. And I am so glad that I ended up finding Canaan Ranch and it really felt like chicken soup for the soul in a bubble. So for 10 days, I just lived in this like surreal world where I just shut myself off from the world. And I just really focused on, okay, Lisa, what is going on with you? How can you make your life less stressful, less, you know, not, you know, reverse burnout and, and find joy. So after coming back from Canyon Ranch, I really still didn't have all the answers, but I had clarity. I made space in my mind and my body. I felt healthy. I felt alive. I did not feel burned out. I just didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I knew that I had to do something. And I made a list of all my business assets and I made a column for this one column had a smiley face and then one column was for a frown face and then a column of how much money I was currently making and the potential of the money I could make. And I listed all of my different business assets and then put either a smiley face or a frown face and the amount of money I'm currently making and then how much joy I'm getting from that asset. So different assets, including my agency, obviously. And then I had a couple podcasts like this one. I had launched Female Disruptors, which was a passion project. I launched two years ago, an online magazine, noting the movement of women disrupting in their industry. So I had all these different, you know, assets that I had going on. And some of them I had no no time for some some months and some of them were taking up all my time. So my agency, the buyer group, hands down was, was heading into my biggest year ever with current and new business. The problem is I was just hating every minute of dealing with the churn and extreme demands and in some ways dated marketing mindset of my clients and also the new business brands that were coming in. So fast forward a little bit, and less than 30 days from coming back from Canyon Ranch, it was obvious. I had to cut the ties with the negatives and open up space for the positives. So this is what I ended up doing. I ended up giving all my clients 30 to 60 days notice. This was on May 1st. And letting them know I'm transitioning out of done for you services. And on June 30th was my last day working with clients. Well, sort of. So I'm changing my business model to focus on teaching and reaching thousands via my specialized online courses, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to focus on collaborating with other experts, with other agencies, joint ventures, affiliate marketing, writing books, and growing my other digital brands like Female Disruptors and my online, other online assets like the podcast, Social Peer Secrets, and Digital Detox Secrets. Both of these are named after my book, by the way. I just want to let you know, I don't hate my past clients. I am just not able to be at their mercy or really anyone's mercy anymore. It's, it's a fact. And a couple of the um, experts that I, that I worked with at Canyon Ranch that are specialists in working with entrepreneurs is I think out of the box and not everyone gets me and that's fine. But if I'm going to think out of the box, I really have to pick a direction where I'm going to be thinking out of the box and maybe sharing my out of, out of the box strategies and, and ways of doing digital marketing and PR with those who really want to learn it. And so that's how I'm, I've decided to really focus on creating online courses and online workshops and, you know, providing personal workshops and in-person workshops and corporate training to those brands who really want to buy and learn what I'm expert in teaching. I also am very focused on authentic self-expression is the key to happiness. I mean, that was one of the things that I learned that I really wasn't being authentic with my own self in order to really be happy in what I was doing. I was doing all the things that I thought I needed to be doing that I knew I was good at, but I didn't necessarily love. So I'm really focusing on my authentic self-expression and tapping into my creativity. And really my mantra is, connecting and doing what brings me joy. And I know this sounds a little bit like, oh, what if I don't have the resources to do that? Or what if it's not the right time to do that? And, you know, I don't in any way suggest, you know, just ripping the bandaid off. Like I said earlier, this, this needs to be taken in possibly baby steps. And these baby steps are what is going to make the difference in a large change over the long run. This is one of the things that, you know, I I tell clients, I also share it with my daughter and my family, you know, 1% a day positive, 1% a day change positive is going to equal a 100% change in about three months. 
So if you can just focus on the small changes, you'll 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 be more apt to have big, large, successful outcomes. Me personally, I want to tap into my creative superpowers that have been stifled under running a service business in an industry. I am just, I'm more futuristic and modern than most brands and agencies. And I have to just come to that reality that I can either be unhappy and run an agency with that point of view, or I can be happy and not to write, a, not try to run an agency and to focus my efforts in more of a business model that is going to be more well suited to bring me happiness. So some of the things that have happened since July 1st, when all of a sudden I don't have clients anymore and I'm focusing on my courses and my workshops and different speaking engagements, like PubCon is one of them coming up, is I'm focusing on connecting with my family. I'm sleeping a lot better. This week, I'm going to be starting a 22 day, it's called 22 day Tara painting and meditation challenge with Whitney Freya. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm just really excited to have more time to focus on my creativity, focus on, on creating courses, focus on sharing my talent and my knowledge with the, the people and the professionals that really want to learn it. Another thing I did that I want to share, I took a three-week vacation so far with my husband and my family over the past month. We went island hopping, and for the first time in years, I did not feel the burden of client emails and team questions or requests. And I just feel like everybody needs to take a step back and take time off and create space in their life so that you can have these moments of complete tranquility and clarity and not be so muddled with the constant input of information and then the constant you feel tied to the output of information. So, you know, one of the ways to look at this and the life management expert that I worked with at Canyon Ranch, she said, you know, you take in so much input into your brain by reading emails and reading social media messages and keeping up with, you know, all of the communication that co that's coming from Slack channels. And then your output of that information requires a lot of brain focus and a lot of creativity, especially in the industry that of public relations and marketing and digital marketing, because some of it's analytical, some of it's creative, some of it is on-demand writing. And at the end of the day, you just leave no room for yourself unless you really create these boundaries of making space for yourself every day. And so you might not have um, the opportunity to take 10 days off, or that might not make sense for you where you are in your, in your life, but you can take maybe 10 minutes every hour or some small step like that and apply it to your life so that you can take small steps that will lead to big changes and not trying to do it all overnight. And one of the guest speakers when I was at Canyon Ranch, his name is Robert Maurer. And I highly recommend that you look him up at robertmauer.com. But he listed out the skills of successful people after much research. And this was a three hour lecture that I went to on the skills of successful people. So number one is having an awareness and acceptance of fear in self and others. So when afraid, having a willingness to reach for support, technical and emotional. So I think that is a really big, big thing that we most of the time miss out on or forget, or, or we just don't know that that's something to focus on. So number two, when afraid, there's a built-in nurturing voice that gently reassures them that it's going to be okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to ask for help. There is an awareness that the response to fear is essential. So this is another key indication of not just successful people, but also successful companies have this type of culture that when afraid, there is a built-in nurturing voice that gently reassures them that it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to be afraid, it's okay to ask for help. Number three, an awareness of the need for attention as well as a generosity in giving and receiving appreciation. So again, this is not just for successful people, this also is points to successful brands. And the giving and receiving of appreciation is something that many times gets missed, especially in the PR world. And then number four, a sense of mission or vision. 
a clear sense of purpose that emphasizes the emotional state one is striving for and the pursuit of goals. So again, you know, making sure that you're looking at what is your sense of mission? What is your vision for your personal life? And if you're an entrepreneur, a mompreneur, no matter what, having a clear sense of purpose that emphasizes the emotional state one is striving for and the pursuit of goals. So I just thought that was super valuable takeaway that I got from Robert Maurer, and he has written also several books on the Kaizen method, which emphasizes small steps lead to big changes versus quick and drastic decisions that could lead to some not so good outcomes. So I just wanted to end on that, the skills of successful people, the four skills, I will also put this in the show notes. And I just wanted to share with you my journey on doing my transition, some of the life lessons I've learned through it and my reset moving forward. So thank you so much for listening and being a fan of Social PR Secrets and Digital Detox Secrets. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for listening to this episode of Social PR Secrets. If you like what you heard, check out the book on Amazon or follow our blog at socialprsecrets.com. This episode was sponsored by The Buyer Group a social PR agency striving to keep our balance in the digital world, practicing public relations, social media, and search marketing, while occasionally drinking a glass of wine or two for the best creativity and results. Thank you all for tuning in. If you would like to get a free chapter of Social PR Secrets, go to socialprsecrets.com free.